All right, so continuing on with my predictions for tonight's fights, I'm going to go to the undercard of the um, Gabe Rosado, David Lemieux fight, and that's going to be the Thomas DeLorme versus Hammer and Hank Lundy. Now, I'm actually, I actually think this is the better fight on the card simply because, man, this, this matchup on paper is ridiculously close. Now, if you guys know who Thomas DeLorme and Hank Lundy are, these guys, um, they're very similar in styles um, to a degree. Hank Lundy can do multiple things. Um, Thomas DeLorme is more of a, uh, an outside fighter, um, and he likes to set up his hooks. He likes to counter you with hooks. Um, but they're both, they both at times, they plant their feet and they throw punches from a distance. Um, it's it's right. <laughs> this matchup is 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 extremely close. And you got a guy like Hank Lundy. This dude is fucking hungry, man. The dude is hungry. You know what I'm saying? Like writers be talking about Adrian Broner. You know what I'm saying? Real cocky. This cat right here is cocky as hell, yo. But I like that. I like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't like. I don't like. You know this. This is this is the hurt sport, man. This is the hurt business, yo. Like boxing, MMA. These motherfuckers get in the ring or the octagon and hurt people for money, man. You know what I'm saying? Well, what's this? You know what I'm saying? Being a nice guy, shit. I don't like that. I don't like cats that are nice in sports like this. It's fucking boring, yo. I want the cocky motherfucker. It don't matter, and I know, you know, <clears throat> I got some racist motherfuckers watching my videos. I don't care if you black or white and cocky. Being cocky does not mean he's black or I, I, I favor the black fighter. He could be motherfucking Palestinian as long as the motherfucker's cocky, yo. You know what I'm saying? I, I like I like dudes cocky. I like dudes sure of himself. You know what I'm saying? You know, nobody can beat you. That's the whole point. You're not supposed to <laughs> go in the ring or go to a press conference and be like, you know, I'm going to do my best. The guy might beat me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to try to do what I can to win the fight. But the guy's really good. I might get my ass kicked. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck? If, if, if a dude said that, we would be like, oh, this dude's whack. I don't want to watch his shit. No. You're supposed to be like, no, nah, dude, I'm, I'm the alpha male. I'm the one. You got to go through me. And that's what Hank Lundy embodies, yo. He embodies that, that, that character, that personality. That's why I like this cat. Now, the problem is, I cannot, this is probably the only fighter in professional boxing that, and I'm going to admit this to y'all, because I'm a cocky motherfucker to, as, as, as well, but I'm going to admit this, this is the only fighter pro possibly, in, you know, that comes to mind right now in professional boxing that I cannot get a read on. Meaning he's so fucking inconsistent, man. You don't know what's going to happen. Let me show you these inconsistencies, man. He fought Victor Postal, Ramundo Beltran, and John John Molina, right? Those are all his losses. He has three losses, okay? His record's 25-3, and three, one draw, 12 knockouts, right? But then, if you look at his wins... It's against notable wins. These are notable wins. Notable or uh, his only losses against or compared to notable wins. Excuse me. His wins: a Josie Olasegan, David Diaz, Richard Brill. Now, if you look at Victor Postal, right, who's an up-and-coming fighter, who Danny Garcia is currently ducking. That's a whole another video. But anyway, if you look at Victor Postal, he is comparable to an a Josie Olasegan and a Richard Brill. Richard Brill is more of a counterpuncher. He's I think he's smarter than Victor Postal. But they're very they're, you know you can compare the styles and, and to some degree. Um, they're outside fighters and they like to use um, um, they like to set up you know their straight uh, their straight punches with jabs and you know things of that nature from the outside. Uh, Victor Pulse is a little more, or he's more active than a Richard Brill. But you get my drift. They're not pressure fighters. You know what I'm saying? They don't fall into the pressure fighter category. 
Neither does Ala Segan. Ala Segan was a dude that was ducked for three fucking years by um, in the junior um, in the junior welterweight division. Now I can't remember who he was the number one contender to, what title it was, but that particular champion at, at that that had that title. Ala Segan was the number one contender for three fucking years, y'all. Three years. Dude was feared. He was feared. Nobody wanted to fight this cat. Except Lucas Matisse and Hank Lundy. A la the two guys that beat him. Okay? So it's like, dude, you beat a Jose Alasegan, a very good fighter. He could have been elite if he would have beaten uh, Lucas Matisse, but he's not. Very good fighter. But you fucking lose to Victor Postal. Okay? You beat the shit out of David Diaz, the former lightweight champion that Manny Pacquiao ran through, you know, basically Manny Pacquiao's first fight uh, where people started seeing that he was moving up in weight gradually. Um, that was his, the door opener fight where people started looking at Manny Pacquiao and they're like, damn, this motherfucker just knocked somebody out at 135, right? David Diaz is not a chump, man. Hank Lundy beat the shit out this cat. But then he loses to Raimundo Beltran. And Beltran ain't no, ch no chump either, but those two are similar. They're pressure fighters. And then you get knocked out. Well, you could put this guy in the same category with those two. You get knocked out by John John Molina, another pressure fighter. So it's hard to, to get a read on him. Does he, does he hate pressure or does he, hit, does he hate rangy fighters? He's, he's lost to, to both types of styles. So it's hard to get a read on this cat. And it's like, based on his wins and his losses, you can't say, oh, he's not ready for big time because he's beating big time people. But then you can't say he's he, he's uh, he's ready for it because he's lost in step-up fights. So it's hard to get a read on this cat, man. It's hard to get a read on him. But the one thing I do know about Hank Lundy is this motherfucker is hungry. I'm talking like dude is it's almost like dude lives in... Africa, Ethiopia, some fucking where. You know what I'm saying? Dude is hungry, man. He's hungry. So, the thing is, he's only 5'7". He has a 68-inch reach. Um, he cannot fight from the outside against Thomas DeLorme. And the reason why he cannot do that is because Thomas DeLorme, if you watched his, uh, not his last fight, but his his uh, his loss to... um. Louis, uh, Luis Carlos Abregu pressure breaks pipes he was beating the shit out of Abregu in the beginning of that beginning part of that uh, that fight actually he dominated Abregu a little bit better than Saddam Ali did in their fight but Delorme, Delorme could not handle the pressure and he got caught he was actually getting caught from for numerous rounds but it was because of the pressure. But if you watch Delorme's last fight against Kareem Mayfield, that was a thorough outclassing, man. Now, I never really had Kareem Mayfield too high on my list as a prospect. Um, I did think Danny Garcia was ducking him. I mean, Danny Garcia is still fucking ducking him, but I didn't have him high on my list. Um, I thought he was a little too wild and shit. He's, he kind of reminds me of, uh, in terms of... Um, punching accuracy and in, in terms of being a little too wild he reminds me of a Sharif Boguer um but you know he, he he was he's a decent fighter it's a it's a very good win for Delorme because coming off the Abregu loss a lot of people were like oh shit you know he's fighting Kareem Mayfield he he could lose this fight and he didn't he he thoroughly outclassed him the way that he should have the way that he should have outclassed Abregu Abregu's a great fighter but I had Delorme winning that fight so that shows me that there's an inconsistency there. I think Delorme was a, is a better fighter than Abrego, and he he couldn't keep up, you know, the the pace that he had from the the beginning half of the fight all the way to the end. So, who wins this? It's crazy, man. It's crazy. See, this will be a situation where where I could be like, I don't know who wins, but. I'm going to choose a fighter because I said I would do that. 
I think this fight comes down to who is going to be consistent. You got two fighters that are inconsistent, that have lost fights that they should have won. Um, I think when it comes to who's more inconsistent, the more inconsistent fighter is Hank Lundy. So I'm going to go with Thomas DeLorme, and I'm going to go by split decision. I think Thomas DeLorme is going to pull it out. It's going to be a fucking rough-ass fight, man. It's going to be a rough fight. But I think Thomas DeLorme is going to pull it out. He's going to use his range. I think he's going to counter Hank Lundy um, multiple times. For Hank Lundy to win this fight, he's got to apply pressure. And he's able to do that. There's a lot of fights where, where, he, where he applied pressure to his opponent and dominated them. But then there's a lot of fights where Hank Lundy likes to plant his feet. And he likes to stay on the outside and use, you know, use his straight shots. Um, set, up, set up his hooks and things like that. Look to counter. I don't think he should do that against Thomas DeLorme. I don't think he should look to counter. I think he should use pressure. That's how um, Abregu caught him, and that's how I think Hank Lundy will catch him. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this fight was a draw. I mean, actually, it should. I mean, I, <laughs> if, if I'd rather pick a winner, but I think this fight could be a draw. But if I had to pick a winner, I think Thomas DeLorme pulls it out. So I'm going to go ahead and conclude this. Let me know what y'all think. Do what you do under the video, but be real. This is real talk for real fans. One.